Hi everybody, it's Mr. Barbier, back with another video. Today's video is dividing fractions and mixed numbers. Let's look at the steps. Step one says to convert mixed numbers and whole numbers into fractions first. Step two, keep the first fraction the same, change the division symbol into a multiplication symbol, and flip the second fraction into its reciprocal. So remember these three words, everyone. Keep, change, flip. Those are the three words you must remember when you divide fractions. Step three, follow the rules for multiplying fractions. Okay? So ladies and gentlemen, division of fractions is very simple. Once you know how to multiply fractions, division of fractions is the same process, except you must do keep, change, flip first. Okay? So let's look at a... Uh, classwork problem together. Let's look at number one, which says two divided by fifth, uh, two thirds, I'm sorry, divided by 12 over 15. All right, let's take a look at that together. Two thirds divided by 12 over 15. What I recommend is that you first write the letters K, C, F on top of the problem like this. Okay, KCF for keep, change, flip. Write them every time you see a division symbol for a fraction problem to guide you so that you know that when I'm dividing fractions, I must do keep, change, flip first. Okay, so what does that mean? It means we keep the first fraction exactly the same, write it as is underneath. We change the division symbol into a multiplication symbol. So we're changing the division operation into its uh, into its inverse, excuse me, into its inverse, also known as its opposite. We're changing the, the division symbol into its opposite. And we're going to flip 12 over 15 into its reciprocal, okay? which means that the denominator goes on top and becomes the numerator. And the numerator becomes the denominator. Okay, that's what, that's what reciprocal means. We're basically inverting the second fraction. Now, please remember, only flip the second fraction. Do not flip both the first and the second. That's another common mistake that students make. And now, ladies and gentlemen, look at, what's, look at what we just did, right? Once you do the keep, change, flip process, you solve this problem the same way you would solve any multiplication of fractions problem, right? So what do we do? We look at 2 and 12, right? And we say to ourselves, is there a common factor between 2 and 12? So 2 and 12 are both divisible by what? What is the GCF, the greatest common factor of 2 and 12? Okay, I just heard someone say, Mr. Barbier, isn't it 2? Can't you divide 2 by 2 and 12 also by 2? The answer is yes, you can, right? Because they're both even numbers. What about 3 and 15? What can divide into both 3 and 15 evenly? Someone just said, Mr. B, I believe it's 3 because 3 can go into 3 and 3 can also go into 15. Yes, that is correct. So remember, ladies and gentlemen, this process is called cross-canceling, also known as cross-simplifying, right? Not to be confused with cross-multiplying, -multipl right? Not to be confused with that. So let's do it. 2 divided by 2 is, let's cancel out the 2, and we put a 1. Very good. And 12 divided by 2 is, very good. I just heard someone say, Mr. Barbier, I think it's 6. That is correct. So we cancel the 12 and we put a 6. Look at 3 and 15, right? 3 divided by 3 is... Okay, I just heard someone say, Mr. B, I believe that's a 1. 
That is correct. And 15 divided by 3 is... Okay, someone just said, Mr. Barbier, if I'm not mistaken, 5 times 3 is 15, so that would be a 5. That is correct. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's rewrite our new fractions, okay? So, here we have 1 over 1. Let me put it right here. Okay? Times... 5 over 6. Now, let me be clear about something before I continue. Students always say, wait, Mr. Barbier, wait a minute, I don't get it. If it's division of fractions, why are we multiplying? Well, the bottom line is this, folks. When you divide fractions, in actuality, you're not actually doing any real division except when you cross simplify. Okay? So we're not really dividing any numbers like for example you're not dividing 15 by 2 and 12 by 3 or something like that no right i know you're looking at this original problem you're thinking well 2 goes into 12 six times right and 3 goes into 15 five times so it'd be 6 over 5 okay no that is not correct when you divide fractions you must do keep change flip first make it into a multiplication of fractions problem, and then solve it that way. So dividing fractions is basically multiplying the second fraction inverted into its reciprocal. That's really what a division of fractions problem is. You're basically taking the first fraction, two thirds, and multiplying it by the second fraction in the form of its reciprocal, which is 15 over 12. And that answer is a division answer. And that's what makes it a division problem. As crazy as that sounds, that's how you divide fractions. So now let's multiply straight across. We have 1 times 5, which is 5. And we have 1 times 6, which is 6. And ladies and gentlemen, the final answer is 5 over 6. Okay? If you follow this process, ladies and gentlemen, you will be fine. You'll be just fine. So guess what? That was number 1. Um... Let's, I'm going to leave number two for you to do because number two is very similar to number one. Number three is also very similar to number one. All right. Just remember, write that KCF first. But let's look at number four. Number four is a division of mixed numbers problem. All right. So whenever I do a video, ladies and gentlemen, my goal is to give you a little bit of each type of problem right? So there's no sense in me doing two and three for you if they're just like number one. But number four is a little different, right? We're dividing mixed numbers. So how do we do this? Well, if you remember, when we multiply mixed numbers, we don't multiply them the way they are, right? If you remember, we had to convert them into improper fractions first. So let me say that again so that you don't forget we're not going to begin this problem by writing KCF on top. No, do not do that. All right. That is not the first step when you're dividing by mixed numbers. It's not the first step when you're multiplying by mixed numbers either. The first step is to convert both of these mixed numbers into improper fractions. Now, how do we do that? Let me see if you remember. We're going to make a multiplication sign here and an addition sign here and we're going to go around in a circle okay as one of my former students called it she called it the wheel we're going to do the wheel here right same thing for this problem we're going to multiply denominator and whole number and then add the answer to the numerator Okay, and we're going to go in a clockwise motion. So let's do that, right? We're going to draw an arrow here so we can put our answer. Someone tell me, what is 5 times 4? Okay, I heard someone say 20 plus 1 is very good. It's 21 over what? Okay, be careful. Common mistakes, students say 21 over 1. No, not 21 over 1. 21 over 5. We keep the denominator the same. 
all right? Always keep the denominator the same. Now, before I continue, I want to say something very quickly. Some students are going to say, well, Mr. B, I don't want to waste any time, so I'm going to make this division sign at X right now. No, do not do that, okay? Do not do that. Do not do the keep change flip process yet. Do not do that yet. Folks, students make mistakes in math because they rush, okay? We're not going to rush. Our only purpose right now is to convert this mixed number into an improper fraction and this mixed number into an improper fraction. That's all we're doing right now. So let's keep the division sign the same. Do not change it to a multiplication X yet. Not yet, okay? Let's convert this one. Can someone tell me what it's going to be? Okay, I heard someone say, Mr. B, it's 10 times 2, which is 20. 20 plus 8, which is 28. Very good. Over what? Someone just said, Mr. Barbier, you keep the denominator the same, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Which is what? 10. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, again, one thing at a time. We converted this mixed number to improper fraction. Keep the division sign the same. Convert this mixed number into an improper fraction. And now, now is when we can do keep, change, flip. Okay, folks, one thing at a time. Don't do two things, three things at the same time. So let's do that. What do we keep? We're going to keep 21 over 5 the same, right? What do we change? C stands for change. We change the division symbol into a what? Very good. Into a multiplication symbol. Into its inverse. And what do we flip? We flip 20 over 10 into what? Okay, very good. 10 over 28. Now we do what we always do. We look to see if we can cross cancel, also known as cross simplify, meaning look at the denominator here and the numerator here and the denominator here and the numerator here and see if we can find the greatest common factor, right? So what is the greatest common factor of 5 and 10? Okay, someone just said, Mr. Barbie, that's 5. That's easy because 5 goes into 5 and 5 goes into 10. Some of you might say, well, why can't you use 10? Well, 10 can go into 10 once, but 10 can't go into 5 because 5 is too small. Right, 5 is smaller than 10. When we look for the greatest common factor, ladies and gentlemen, the greatest common factor cannot be a number that's bigger than either of these two numbers. It has to be either equal to the smallest number or, you know, um, it can be smaller than the smallest number too. Depends on the two numbers we're looking at, right? So 5 divided by 5 is, someone just said 1, very good. And 5 goes into 10. Okay, twice. Very good. Nice. Now, what about 21 and 28? Some of you are looking at that and you're saying, mm, I don't think anything can go into those two numbers. Well, be careful. Ladies and gentlemen, cross-simplifying and reducing fractions is made very easy when you know your multiplication tables very well. So here's my question to you. 21 and 28 are both in the what times table? Think. Okay, someone just said, Mr. B, um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe they're both in the seven times table. Yes, you would be correct. They are both in the seven times table. So 21 divided by seven is what? Okay, someone just said, Mr. Barbier, that's three, right? Yes, seven times three is 21. And 28 divided by seven is what? Okay, well, someone just said if you add 7 to 21, you get 28. So that means that 7 goes to 28 four times? Yes, that is correct. Very good. Very good. Please memorize your, your 7 times table if you haven't already done so. And now let's rewrite our new fractions, right? We now have 3 over 1. Let me write it right here. 
times what? Okay, good. 2 over 4, right? And now I can multiply straight across. What's 3 times 2? Someone just said 6. Very good. What's 1 times 4? Someone just said 4. Okay, here's my question. Is this my final answer? Okay, someone just said, um, yeah, I think so. Are we all in agreement with that? Okay, someone else is saying, wait a minute, Mr. Barbier, isn't six and four, aren't they both even numbers? Can't I divide by two? Yeah, you can divide by two. Yes, you can. Ladies and gentlemen, let's remember, whenever you're working with fractions, always make sure that your answer cannot be simplified. Okay, and if it can, you must simplify it. So 2 into 6 is how much? Someone just said 3. And 2 into 4 is how much? Someone just said 2. Very good. My final answer is 3 over 2. Okay? There it is, ladies and gentlemen. And some of you are saying, well, but Mr. Barbier, that's an improper fraction. It is, but it's still a correct answer, okay? This is still a correct answer. Now, should you know how to convert an improper fraction to a mixed number, just in case? The answer is yes, you should. So let's put here 3 over 2, or how do we convert an improper fraction into a mixed number? It's very simple. We say... How many times does 2 go into 3, right? We look at this like it's a division problem. 2 goes into 3 how many times? Correct, only once. So 1 is my whole number because 2 goes into 3 one time. Now, I'm going to make a fraction line, okay? And I'm going to ask you a very simple question. If 2 goes into 3 once what's left over? What's the remainder? Okay, someone just said, well, one left over, right? Because two goes to three once, but there's a remainder of one. Where does the remainder go? The remainder goes right here, numerator. Okay? And as always, the denominator, which is two, remains the same. That never changes. Okay? So, we have two answers for this question. We have 3 over 2, also known as 3 halves, or 1 and 1 half. Okay? Both answers are correct because they're both equivalent to each other. Okay? That's what I want you to understand. 3 over 2 and 1 and 1 half are the same thing. They're the same value. As a matter of fact, somebody might tell me, well, Mr. Bravi, is it 1 and 1 half, also 1.5? The answer is yes. So all three answers are correct. 3 over 2, 1 and 1 half, or 1.5, which is a decimal. But you know what? Because we're dealing with fractions, let's leave our answer in fraction form, either as an improper fraction or as a mixed number. All right? Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, we just did two problems from the classwork. Um, let me just say one quick thing about number five. Some of you might say, well, Mr. Barbier, um, I'm confused with this one because it's a whole number divided by a mixed number. I don't know what to do. All right. Well, very simple. Ladies and gentlemen, the first step was convert mixed numbers and whole numbers into fractions first, right? So we're not going to do any keep change flip yet. Okay. Do not write KCF yet. We have to make this 20 into a fraction, and we have to make 3 and 3 fourths into a fraction. How do we do that? Very simple, very simple. Make any whole number into a fraction by putting it over the number 1, just like this. Now, students always ask me this question, Mr. B, can you do that with any whole number? The answer is yes, you can. Okay? If the whole number is 15, it would be 15 over 1. If the whole number was 89, it would be 89 over 1. That's how you make any whole number into a fraction. Very simple. We're going to keep the division sign the same. 
okay? And just like we did with problem number four, we're going to convert this mixed number into an improper fraction again. Please remember how to do this, folks. Do not forget. We're going to multiply the denominator and the whole number, and we're going to add the answer to the numerator, and we're going to go in a circle. Okay, there it is. So someone tell me four times three. Very good, that's 12, and 12 plus three. Very good, that is 15. 15 over what? Okay, someone said, Mr. Barbier, you keep the denominator the same, so it's going to be four on the bottom. You are correct. Now that we have two fractions, ladies and gentlemen, two fractions, doesn't matter, it doesn't matter that they're improper fractions, they're just fractions, right? Now we can do keep, change, flip. Okay, KCF. Let's do it. So we keep the first fraction the same, right? It stays 20 over 1. We change the division sign into its inverse, into its opposite. It becomes a multiplication symbol. And we flip 15 over 4 into its reciprocal. Okay, please know that word, reciprocal. And it becomes what? Somebody tell me. Okay, someone just said 4 over 15. Don't be afraid to talk out loud, ladies and gentlemen. I know it's a video, but guess what? I can still hear you through the video, believe it or not. All right. Now, what do we do? Look to see if we can cross cancel. Can we cross cancel? Somebody tell me. Well, someone's saying, well, Mr. Barbier, but you know, you have one here and four here. You can't cross cancel that because one doesn't get any smaller. You're right. But just because we can't cross cancel this way doesn't mean we can't cross cancel this way, right? Now, some of you are saying, well, but 15 can't go into 20, you know, evenly. You're right. But what else can go into 15 and 20 besides don't just look at 15. Think of your multiplication tables, right? 15 and 20 are both in the... Okay, someone just said, Mr. B, they're both in the 5 times table. So we can divide by 5. Yeah, you're right. We can divide by 5. Okay? So 15 divided by 5 is... Someone just said 3. Very good. And 20 divided by 5 is... Someone just said 4. So folks, I want to be very clear about something. Just because I can cross cancel in only one direction and not in both directions doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. You should still do it, okay? It makes the numbers smaller, and then after afterwards, you can see the multiplication becomes a lot easier. So let's rewrite our new fractions now. What's my new fraction on the left? That's going to be 4 over 1, right? bring down the multiplication sign. And what's my new fraction on the right? 4 over 3, yes? There it is. And now we just multiply straight across. 4 times 4 is what, somebody? Okay, thank you. 16 is correct. And 1 times 3 is 3. And ladies and gentlemen, just double check that this fraction cannot be simplified, meaning 16 and 3, do they have a common factor? Okay, the answer is no, right? Because 3 can go into 3, but 3 can go into 16 evenly, right? 16 is not in the 3 times table. So this is my final answer, 16 over 3. But as I said earlier, let's also write the answer as a mixed number as well, because this is a improper fraction. The top number is bigger than the bottom. All right. So what is this as a mixed number? Someone tell me. Three goes into 16 how many times? Count by threes. We have three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, right? How many times is that? Oh, someone just said five times. You're right. With how much left over? If three times five is 15 and this is 16, we have what left over? 
Okay, someone just said one. Very good. That one goes on top, and we keep the denominator the same. Very good. Five and one third. Ladies and gentlemen, again, both of these answers are correct. 16 over 3, 5 and 1 third. I'd like you to give me both answers when you do your classwork and homework. If you have an improper fraction, give me the improper fraction and the mixed number. Okay? If it's a proper fraction, like we did for number 1, 5 over 6, notice the top number is smaller than the bottom, then leave it like that, as long as it can't be simplified. Right? Very important. For example, if this was three over six, I want you to simplify it, right, to one half. Divide both three and six by three. If this was if this was four over six, divide four by two and six by two to get two thirds, right? So keep that in mind. If it's a proper fraction that can be simplified, simplify it. If it's a proper fraction that cannot be simplified like this, leave it the way it is. If it's an improper fraction like this, Give me the improper fraction and the mixed number. Okay, give me both. All right, that's the classwork problems. Folks, you are responsible for also doing the homework problems. And as you can see here, the homework problems are just like the classwork problems. It's just that I gave you eight homework problems now instead of just six. If you have any issues, uh, please don't hesitate to either email me or um, send me a private message on Google Classroom. All right. Good luck, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.